So I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima. The video game has great beautiful depiction of Japanese culture and aesthetics. And I realized that I miss Japan so much. I really want to go to Japan. Last time I went to Japan was a year ago, April. But for now, I don't have time to go to Japan. So I started thinking, what would I do if I had three days to spend in Tokyo? So last time I went to Japan with my wife, who never been to Japan. So what we did is some combination of kind of hardcore local Japanese go-to place and, and a tourist place together. So I think that was a good balance. So I'm gonna share what we did and what I would do if I had three days in Tokyo. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Three days in Tokyo. You probably use Haneda Airport. And actually, I didn't do it because I didn't have time last time. But what I really wanna do at the time, right after I arrived Haneda Airport, is that I wanted to go to Hot Spring immediately. And there is a Hot Spring next to Haneda, or even kind of connected with Haneda Airport, called Tenku no Yu. This one. Onsen, look that! Look this view! It's not nature, but there's a pine tree. Oh my god, mm, onsen. It's, and again, it's not just hot water from the pub. It's natural hot spring beneath the ground. Amazing. Because you're like a tired of the airplane, right? You can't move, you can't walk out. So it's a very refreshing feeling. I would do that before I go to hotel. There's uh, the place you can just put this, your suitcase. You just want to refresh and brush your teeth. It's important. But let me check about tattoo stuff. Because some place in Japan, which is very bad, they don't allow tattoo. Mm, I don't see it. I don't know. But I really think Japan should change to accept more tattoo. Because rejecting people just because of they have tattoo is, I believe, it's against the Japanese constitution. So, and next one, you go into hotel. I highly recommend to have a hotel nearby Tokyo Station because it's a center of Tokyo and it's close to Imperial Palace. Tokyo used to be Edo, right? Edo period. And there was Edo Castle. And Edo Castle was the center of Edo. So to access anywhere, best place has been always Edo Castle. It hasn't changed even now. So if you have some hotel Tokyo, I would do Ginza, which have a lot of good restaurants around. And after you check in hotel, little relaxed, you probably a little tired to explore, but you still want to have a good Japanese dinner. I recommend Torigin. Torigin is yakitori place. What is yakitori? It's a barbecue chicken. What would you say? But Torigin, I recommend this place, but just be careful. Two things, cash only, okay? And there's another Torigins, but go this place, Torigin Honten. And they have English menu. And I highly recommend to try Torimeshi. You need to order Torimeshi first because it takes like 15 minutes. It takes a little time. But so I recommend to get Torimeshi. And you just enjoy yakitoris, but what I did last time was, I think we ordered some set, like an enjoy, B, special, or C, and everything here is fantastic. And if you like alcohol, get some Japanese beer. Mm. Mm. So good. And I maybe just walk around Ginza and I go to some konbini and I get some snacks or something to drink, and then relax at a hotel. And next day, so day one. In my experience, you might have jet lag still, of course, and you might wake up a little early, but don't waste. Waking up early is great, especially if you have some place to go to early, which is Tsukiji Market. So utilize your jet lag and go to Tsukiji Market early morning. And last time I did was I went to Kitsunea. So they open 6.30. I think I arrived six and we were at the first line, but after 15 minutes, there's a crazy line. So if you want to try this food, <laughs> just go super early. I guarantee you, it was it. It's really good. It's a beef and intestine rice bowl. 
And I always add the boiled egg. I just lied. I, I, I've been there once, <laughs> so it's not always. But if I go it again, I would add a boiled egg again because it's really good. And then you have time to explore at Tsukiji because they open pretty early. There's a, they sell a great sushi chef knife, high quality. And they sell teas. If we want to have some caffeine, you can get coffee and matcha. Last time we had a matcha, that was fantastic. And last time I bought, and the only local would buy was the dry octopus and a dry squid. It's my favorite. Then you walk a lot, you enjoy a lot, and then you get hungry again. And it's, you know, the Tsukiji market. You want to try really good seafood. I highly recommend. There's a good place, Unitora. I went to Unitora, but I prefer Sushi Kuni. Then walk around, definitely try to go to Tsukiji Honganji, which is temple. And yeah, just walk around and find some like a cute hidden temple by yourself or shrine. It's very fun. Then probably 2 p.m. I would go to Imperial Palace. And also you have some time to drop souvenir you bought from Tsukiji to your hotel. Imperial Palace used to be Edo Castle. You can still see the old architectures there. It's very beautiful. Especially Sakura season. The castle and the Sakura view is fantastic. I highly recommend that. And if you want to have some tour, you need some reservation. But last time when we went there, we made it without reservation. But it depends. After you enjoy the Imperial Palace, I want to go to Akihabara because I love Akihabara. If you like Japanese anime or video game, Akihabara is the place you have to go. And I'm telling you, a day is not enough, Akihabara. But this is just three days in Tokyo, right? So if you want to know what Akihabara is, just go to Akihabara and try Radio Kaikan, Radio Kaikan. So that's a building that has a lot of stores. Plastic toy, the video games, the vintage toys, and a lot of anime, otaku stuff, and also comics. I love Radio Kaikan. And if you like Radio Kaikan, maybe next time you go to travel to Japan, you can have more time to spend in Akihabara. Just be careful about exploring Akihabara if you are with your family, because some places are not very family friendly at all. So just be careful. Then after I went to Radio Kaikan, I want to walk up to Ueno. There's a Ameyoko, a very classic the place. There's a nice temple I really like, and a street food. Last time I went there, I got a I got a very high quality Japanese made jeans. I still wear it. I love it, and they have a really good store like that. And if you get hungry, you get some street food. So after you ate that, I would walk to Asakusa. There's a beautiful temple, and also again there's a street food and a nice souvenir stores. Especially, I really recommend going to Asakusa at night because just light up is just fantastic and beautiful. And here's my things. Because I love hot spring and I love public bath, I would go Akebonoyu. Look at this entrance. So classic. So this is a public bath, not hot spring, I believe. Then, if you still have time. This is the last time I read it because Again, my wife never been to Japan, so we wanted to do some tourist place. So we went to Tokyo Skytree. Just walking up to Skytree from Asakusa. Yeah, from Tokyo Skytree, you can see like almost entire view of Tokyo, night view. Local people don't go there, and it's pretty tourist place, but it's kind of satisfying. So I recommend to go there. And day two. Day one, you rush it a lot, right? Because you can't wait. I mean, that's what I did last time. So day two, you want to have little relaxed time. So day two, I would do some museum day. I'll take a little stroll, relaxed. So I wake up and I just go to Konvini and I get some, try some new Konvini food and definitely get all your cha. Then walking around the park, and I go to some old school coffee place. Yeah, of course, there's a like a cool Instagram-y coffee place in Japan. There's a lot. And actually, it tastes really good. 
I want to see something really special and cool and original. So I would go to Cafe do Rumble. So this is their website. So classic. So they're talking about, according to this, this is one of the oldest coffee place in Japan. And there was also some pioneer that split a coffee culture in Japan. So this is, this one is original place. Looks amazing. Yeah, I would definitely want to try this kind of place. But they open pretty late. That's a problem. 12. And then museum. Tokyo National Museum. That's huge. I mean, last time I went there, I spent two and a half an hour, but it wasn't enough. So you probably want to spend three hours because it's huge and then fun. So I would highly recommend going to Tokyo National Museum. And then for a little early dinner, I would go, to the place I really want to go is Muromachi Sunaba. It's a soba place, very, very old soba place. It's been there since 1869. Wow. So soba is a Japanese noodle, but not sure if they have English menu though, because I don't see English website. Let me see. Yeah. I don't see English website, but they, they hire someone. So what I would do is if we really want to go this place, just look at menu. I look at menu. So what I want to eat is, ah, oh, this is good too. Tempura soba. I'm, I'm going to get tempura soba and then tenchira moriawase. So what you need to do is show your photo and then say, kore kudasai. Kore kudasai. This one, please. Easy. Or if you want to do something very special that you can only eat in Japan and controversial, I want to say this. I love animals. And my favorite animal on this planet is whales. Okay? But Japan has been hunting whales as food for a long time. That's our tradition and history. But it has a very strict law and limitation for hunting whales. I think which is good because I love whales, but there's a place you can eat whales. And then I went there last year and that was amazing. <laughs> really good. The place is Ichinotani. I'm not sure if they have English menu though, but that was fantastic. Like this, ooh, is that whales? Yeah. I think I got those kind. Oh my God, trust me. It tastes really good. This one looks good. Oh, raw whales and the egg. If I go now, I'll get this. Yes, this one. Then, I know it's pretty packed. Then I will go to Shinjuku because there's a place called Doug. If you like Haruki Murakami's novel, I think you probably heard this place. Doug Jazz Cafe. So there's a Japanese culture called Jazz Kissa which mean jazz cafe, audiophile, jazz fun, people is playing jazz and serving good coffee. But that's one of my favorite Japanese cultures. And they have a really nice classic vibe. And the speaker they use is JBL LE8. And I had the speaker actually. And uh, yes, I'm an audiophile. I would definitely go this place because again, I was with my wife and this place, you can smoke inside. So it's pretty, pretty smells like cigarette. And she really didn't like it. So we couldn't get in last time. But if I go there alone, I would definitely go there. I don't smoke though, but this place, I really want to try. And then at night, I really want to recommend. And I also I wanted to show my wife, Kabukicho, which is like a night place in Tokyo. Some people say it's not safe, but it's, you know, it's safe. I mean, compared to 90s or early 2000s, extremely safe, so don't worry. What you can enjoy is real Final Fantasy hairstyle host people. And also there's a Godzilla, and also Don Quixote. Then if you are like me, love to enjoy some public bath, I will go Mannenyu. Looks like a classic public bath. Look this. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I will go this place at night and then relax. Because usually hotel doesn't have giant bathtub and I love giant bathtub and I don't mind sharing hot water with some strangers. Yeah. That's something I would do in the end of 
day two. Like museum, good food, public bus. Amazing. Nobunaga, Akechi. And here you go, Yasuke. This is so day three, this is what we did actually last year. I'm huge ramen fan. And I love ramen jiro. One of the best ramen in Japan. And then I want to eat ramen jiro, mita honten. Every time I go to Tokyo, I go this place in the morning. Because less line. If you go another time, you need you end up waiting like a lot. But in the morning, less line. But just to be careful, there's a lot of rules. After you finish, you put your bowl to the counter and you clean by yourself and then leave. So there's a rule. But if you don't know the rule, you can't follow. And if you're not comfortable speaking Japanese or if you don't have any Japanese friends, I don't recommend to go to this place. So what my wife did was she was waiting me because she didn't want to eat ramen jiro in the morning. She was at Passage Coffee and drinking nice coffee and she had a nice homemade granola and I had some bite. That was one of the best granola I ever had. That's the place. And after that, we walked to Zojoji and saw Tokyo Tower. That temple is pretty nice and very historical. It was built 1393 originally and it moved to the present location 1598 wow i didn't know and you can you can take a nice picture if we want like a temple and a tokyo tower like a deep tokyo view you can get and we took subway going to harajuku and she wanted to go to harajuku place but i'm not interested in that kind of stuff because i've seen it and i love synthesizers so i went to the vintage synthesizer place if you like those kind of place, amazing, you should go. And definitely try Meiji Shrine, Meiji Jingu. And you will surprise that is located, the busiest place in Tokyo. But inside of the temple, it's, that shrine place is so quiet. It has some, some different vibe. I like the contrast. And what we do, what we did last time was that, here's the things. She wanted to do shopping and I want to do shopping. But she wanted to do shopping in like some vintage outfit, some like nice, cool fashion. But I wanted to do Akihabara shopping. So we separated. She went to Shimokitazawa and she got a lot of nice outfit. And I went to Akihabara second round. And I got like a toys and I did a lot of gacha gacha. And then you have a lot of shopping stuff. You definitely want to go back to your hotel to put the things. Meaning you want to eat dinner around your hotel. So what I would do is, and I'm sure you are probably tired. So you want to just go to a restaurant, you, wanna, you can walk. There's a ramen place, Kyushu Jangara. Some people said that's Keanu Leaves' favorite place. I'm not sure if it's true. But I would go to Tonkatsu Aoki Ginza branch. Tonkatsu is deep fried pork food in Japan and it's really delicious. And get some beer if you drink. Oh, it's already day three, the end? Yeah. Conclusion. Day three, it's day three in Tokyo is not enough. But if you wanna enjoy Tokyo in just three days, what I just gave you is one of the options you can consider. And then probably it's too packed, I guess. But hope you enjoy some of them. And if you have some suggestion or if you've been there and what you think, please let me know in the comment. Please enjoy your Japan trip and stay safe and have fun. Bye.